So red twelve are less than one. Why the absolute value of pi should be less than one? Okay. So in general, think of a AR one process of the kind that we are concerned. X t is equal to phi x t minus one plus v t. Okay, phi x t minus one plus v t. Okay, assume that x t is a random variable which has a constant mean, some constant mean mu. Mu could be any value. It could be a negative number. It could be a positive number. It could be zero. Right? In this context, what would be the value of x t? So expectation x t, because it's a constant variable. It's, it's a, you know. So this is also mu. Expectation x t by x t is mu. Expectation x t minus one is mu. Because if you remember, x t is a random variable. What do you mean by x t is a random variable? X t could have taken different values. And expectation x t is the mean of those values. x t minus one is also a random variable because x t minus one is the value of x t in the last period, and that could have taken any value, right? That could have taken any value from a probability distribution. So x t minus one is also a random variable, and expectation x t minus one is the mean of that. We are assuming that these means are constant. So expectation x t is mu, expectation x t minus one is mu, expectation x t minus two is mu, and so on and so. Is this something clear to everybody? Yes. Right? Yes. Sure. So if I'm making that assumption, what do you think will be the value of mu in this context? What do you think will be the value? And 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 remember, and remember, v t is normally distributed mean zero. Variance sigma square v and covariance v t v t minus j is equal to zero for all j not equal to zero. So v t is a is a normally distributed random variable with mean zero, a constant variance, and no covariances across. Right? No covariances across. Okay? Sure. Right. So, what do you think will be the value of mu? What do you think will be the value of what do you think will be the value of mu? Yes. How do you find the value of mu? Take expectation on both sides. So you get expectation x t. Is phi expectation x t minus one plus expectation v. Sure. So what do I get on this side? What is expectation x t? Mu. Mu. Yes. Phi. What is expectation x t minus one? Mu. Mu. And what is this? Zero. Zero. So you have this. Yeah. Now what is the only number which will satisfy this arbitrarily? Mu is equal to phi mu. What is the only number which is the same number when multiplied by anything in the world? Is one the same number as one multiplied by three? No. Zero. 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 Right? Which means that mu must be equal to zero. Sure. Yeah. Implying mu is equal to zero. So it means that expectation x t is equal to zero. Right, the long-term mean of x t is zero, and which works fine with the assumption of e t. If e t is phi e t, so instead of x t, we think of e t, then that's what we have in mind for e t. Right? Sure. On the other hand, if this process were like this, say alpha plus phi x t minus one. What would have been expectation x t? What would have been expectation x t? It would be expectation x t is alpha plus phi expectation x t minus one plus e, right? So you would have mu is equal to alpha plus phi mu. 
right? Or you would have had mu is equal to alpha upon 1 minus pi. So if alpha is non-zero, this mean will be non-zero. So only if alpha is zero, this mean is zero. And that's what we get when we set alpha equal to zero. Xt is equal to pi, xt minus one plus v. Now for an autocorrelated model, when et is the error term, should we have a model where et is alpha plus phi et minus one plus vt, or should we have a model where et is phi et minus one plus vt? Should we have which of the two models should we have? If you're thinking of et as the error term of a regression model, should the autoregressive process for et have an alpha or not have an alpha? Not have an alpha because we know that expectation ET is zero. So mu will have to be zero in the case of ET. Right? And therefore, we will when you specify an AR1 process for the error term, you know put a constant in it. Because which will mean that the error terms in your original equation have a non-zero mean. Yeah, which will have lots of consequences for the derivation of the OLS estimators. Because expectation ET is not equal to zero, then the coefficients of phi and all that change, right? Okay? Sure. So therefore, therefore we will assume that this is equal to zero and we have a process like this. Sir, so could you just repeat what you said? Is See, thanks. If alpha were not zero, then expectation ET would also be not zero. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. But what is expression ET? The mean of the error term in the original regression. And we have explicitly assumed that that is a zero mean process. Right? So if your error terms do, if expectation ET is not zero, then while, de de while deriving certain things for your OLS model, you will get into different kinds of problems. Because that's an assumption which you have explicitly made there. And therefore, when you write the first order AR process, when the error term as a first order AR process, you never write et is equal to alpha plus phi et minus 1 plus vt. You always specify it as et is equal to phi et minus 1 plus vt because you want expectation et to be 0. Right? Okay. So that's the first learning. Okay. Now, so if this is 0, this is 0. Okay. And expectation xt and expectation xt minus 1 are both mu. Let me see what is the covariance between... Let me see what is the covariance between xt and xt minus 1. Yeah, let me see what is the covariance between xt. First, let me find out what is the variance of xt. What is the variance of xt? It will be... What is the variance of xt? Variance of xt is phi square... Right? Variance of this plus the variance of this plus the covariance between xt and vt. Right? The variance of this whole term will be the variance of this whole term, which will be the variance of this plus the variance of this plus 2 covariance xt minus 